Pillar of Jets and an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle, and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. The show's about to start. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wait to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The see John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. Sure, there's always room for one more. Our story opens today at the Slick Observatory, where an international group of scientists, eggheads and double domes, were meeting to dedicate the new giant 1,000-inch telescope. The chairman, Sir Newton Fugg, was presiding. Today we will prove once and for all that there can be no life on the moon. Dr. Milton Nudnick, egghead of the year, was given the honor of the first peak. What do you see? I see two moon creatures. Impossible! The scientists rushed to the eyepiece, and incredibly, Nudnick was right. Why? It's a moon moose! And he's signaling us! What does he say? He says... Here we come, ready or not. Sure enough, a strange rocket ship had left the moon and was heading straight for the Earth. The word spread in a flash. Extra, extra, moon men to invade Earth. President declares emergency. Now hear this. This is Dorson Bell speaking. The moon rocket ship is nearing the Earth. This invasion is not a play, I repeat. Not a play. Please feel free to panic. And some people did panic. Stores closed, houses were shut up tight. Everywhere panic reigned. What's the headlines, George? Invasion from moon. Hmm. So what else is new? Meanwhile, at Washington Airport, the newly appointed ambassador to the moon, Krevney Blatt, and other dignitaries and diplomats were waiting for the strange craft to land. Here it comes! The rocket ship had made a perfect one-point landing, and while all eyes watched expectantly, the hatch opened. Welcome, moon people. You dig them, Earth talk? Bullwinkle, they think we're moon people. They do? Then take me to your president. No, no, no. We gotta tell him the truth. Gentlemen, I'm Rocky the Flying Squirrel. And I'm Bullwinkle the Moose. And we're both from Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. Minnesota? You mean you've been to the moon and back? Why, they've discovered a great new rocket fuel. And so to a hero's acclaim, our adventurers told their strange and incredible story. It seemed that just days before, in their little house in Frostbite Falls, Bullwinkle had been baking a quick-rising cake, according to his grandmother's old recipe. But the first layer... <laughs> had risen a little faster than they'd expected. And the next thing they knew, the stove had been blown clear to the moon. Well, they had to get it back. Sure, we still owe two payments on it. And so the boys put together their version of a spaceship and used the second layer of that extraordinary cake to propel them to the moon. And the third layer blasted us back. That cake better must be a revolutionary rocket fuel. My boy, you must make more of that cake for your government. Bullwinkle, you're going to be a famous scientist. Well, after all, I am a graduate of MIT the Moose Institute of Toe Dancing. Unfortunately, our boys wouldn't have been so happy had they overheard two notorious spies. You hear, Natasha? First get the formula and then kill the moose or vice versa. And so a short while later, the new director of guided moosles was interrupted by... Hello, you great, big, wonderful moose. Boy, that's right neighborly of you. You will give me grandmama's recipe? What third? Well, I hope to be a grandmama myself someday. I'd love to, but in the explosion, I only saved half my recipe. I know how much, but not what of. Natasha's friend then did a very unneighborly thing. <coughs> Darling, will you please hold this package for me? Well, I'd plan to leave in a couple of minutes. Don't worry, you will. 
Sounds like a clock. Bullwinkle's steel trap mind had done it again. It was a clock, only attached to 14 sticks of dynamite, and it was wired to go off in 30 seconds. Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, Bullwinkle's Ride, or Goodbye, Darling. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. 